Hello and welcome to hobby vlog number 142. Now Rosie did a wonderful thing and woke me at 2.30 this morning. This is Sunday morning as I record this. And so I've been up pottering for a little bit um, and uh, now I'm about to start editing the video. Um, this is the life of a father. Um, and uh, yeah, you just gotta make hay while, sometimes while the moon shines. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed this video. It's been a really, really exciting week for me in terms of hobbying. I've had a great time and I've done a lot of different stuff, started some new projects, finished some projects. Uh, and I normally stand here and go, I don't think I did very much, but I'm not sure. But this week I feel like I was very, very productive. So uh, buckle up, this could be a long one. Uh, get a cup of tea, sit back, do some hobbying, have a listen, have a watch and enjoy. And let me know what you think in the comments below. I really value those comments, they mean a lot to me. So don't be shy, do say hello and I do reply to every single one of them. And this week particularly, I have made use of comments from last week's vlog to um, work particularly on the Sarissa pipped head mine entrance. And that have been very, very helpful comments. So thank you to the people that left those. Um, you'll see your ideas being realized through this video. So thank you very much. Anyway, let's get to it. Enjoy the video and I'll see you again at the end. Well then, I've mixed up some grout with uh, what uh, the sandy color. I can't remember what they call it here, but it isn't sand. <laughs> but that, not that it matters, it's a sandy coloured grout. And uh, this is probably going to take two or three coats because of the blue underneath. I did briefly consider doing black and then coming over with the grout, with this grout, but uh, yeah, this will be fine. It'll just take a couple of coats, that's all. Uh, and because grout stays liquid when it's cold, I'll put this in the fridge and this mix will be good for several days. So I'll be able to apply another coat in the morning and then another coat at the end of tomorrow and that should get it done. So don't panic too much about trying to get a full coverage. If, if you are looking at this and going, oh, we haven't got full coverage, that's not very good. Don't worry about that because two or three coats and it will have a full coverage. So there we are. It's so warm, that might even be dry tonight and I might be able to get another coat on tonight. We shall see. So I'll pop that in the fridge now and uh, come back and do another coat as soon as I can. All right, so most of this has dried nicely, but unfortunately the, um, the brambles just never do. And it's gonna take several coats of glue to actually get them dried and secure. So I've got my watered down PVA here and I'm just going to slap it on like that and it might take a couple of applications like I say to get it to get solid but trust me eventually it will um, and if you're worried about it going shiny well in my experience it doesn't so we will find out together whether I'm wrong this time but most of when I've done this before I've never had a problem so yeah just quickly apply whole batches of PVA over this just to make sure it doesn't fall off. You don't want it to fall off. But other than that, I think that's done. So I'll get that done, apply however many I need to. I'll try to remember to let you know how many it is. Um, and if I have any more ideas for any other details, I'll add them on. But for now, I'm pretty happy with that. All right, so this took two and a little bit more to get full coverage with that uh, black grout. So it didn't take that much, to be honest. And what I'm gonna do now is I've got some dark gray and my big dry brushing brush, brush, can't speak. And I'm gonna come along and dry brush the, uh, the top of this and all of it actually. Now I actually don't wanna take that much of this dark gray off. I'd have quite a lot of paint on for the dark grey. This will bring out all of the texture, as you can see. And now I'm going to come along with some lighter grey to finally bring it to the, te to the grey colour that I want. And then I'll pull out some crazy colours and uh, really make it pop. And I'll do this on this one and also on on the other one that I'm currently making. I haven't yet started the third design because I'm just working out in my head what to do with it. But yeah, let's just get some very quick 
darker grey dry brushing done like this. There we are, that's that. So now I'll do the other one and then I'll bring you back for the next step when I get to it. And the next piece I'm going to do is this. And I've just been looking at it for a little bit and I think I've decided what I'm going to do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put it through and I'm going to cut it along this line. Now, um, it may not be that I can cut with the, uh, with, with the Proxon because of how high it is. As I say, these are the, this is the issue with the Proxon. It hasn't got the highest kind of like cutting space, but I can slice along that with my knife and then slice along that with my knife. And what I'll end up with is two halves, which I'm then gonna carve into just little hillocks and do something really simple like that, cover them with grass. And they'll be really nice, not very steep, can place things on them, but just add a little bit of interest to a gaming table. And I'm looking at this one, I'm wondering if I might not be able to do something similar, but I'm not totally sure. However, this one I definitely can. So, and this one I'll be able to put through the Proxon like this, so I'll cut that in half um, and then do the same thing. So that's my next two. So I'll get myself, get those cut up and then bring you along to show what it looks like when I'm about to start doing the texturing. Well, I took a bit of fettling, but I actually managed to do both on the Proxon. You can see here, I've got some little shivers because what I did was <laughs> put it in, turned it round and you can see where I turned it because that's where that big hole is and then pushed it through like that and that worked okay. It doesn't matter about it being too even. Um, I could have made it more even by putting a, a stop block in, but I'm gonna be carving the tops anyway. I wanna make them interesting. And I was able to do the same thing on the other one. So what I'm gonna do now is take my knife, gonna spend a bit of time smoothing the edges. I want these to be quite flat. There's gonna be a bit more waste on these than there would be on the other ones that I'm gonna do because these are actually gonna be hillocks. So I'm just gonna kind of smooth up the edges um, and make it so that they all turn into little grassy knolls or, or hillocks or whatever. And what I could even do is split this in half again to make it a little bit more, a um, little bit more interesting maybe, uh, so I don't have two that the same size, same shape, which might look a bit odd. So yeah, I'll get those, uh, get those carved up um, in downtime through the day. I'm going to, have to go back to my desk now, and I'll bring you back for the next step when I get to it. All right then. So that took about four or five coatings, but it's covered nicely now. It's a little bit warped, but it's not too bad. Uh, it's I'm happy enough with it, and. Uh, yeah, it's, it's very, very slightly warped. I'm not sure what I could have done about that. I did actually mean to put some grout on the bottom, but then I ran out of the mix. I used the absolute, all of the, what I did to do this, uh, say four or five coatings. And so, yeah, it will just have to be what it is. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to do the waves coming in. And yes, I'm using silicon sealant because it's great. And what I have here is a little pot of 99% alcohol and I have my toothpicks. And this is a thing that I've done more than once, though my silicon sealant has clearly clogged up. So see if I can, oh, I can, I can pull the plug out. There we are. That would be lucky if that's all it needed. It was, well, hey. So what we're gonna do is just gonna put some silicon sealant down by where we want the waves to, to start and the water to start. And if you don't use alcohol, what I've found is it really does dry not very clear. But by smudging it around with alcohol like this, and you can use a different thing than a toothpick if you want to. Um, I just like using toothpicks because of the control I get, but it's not the quickest tool, as you can see. But by smudging it around with alcohol, it seems to somehow denature it slightly and it gets more crystal clear. So, um, yeah, not only do I use the alcohol and toothpick technique just to get texture and to build up peaks and what have you, which I'll do later, but it also works to actually make the, make the stuff a little bit more transparent. So, um, yeah, it's got a double a double purpose. 
So I'll get this done, this first layer done. And what I'll do is I'll bring you back, because it's all just going to be this over and over, just adding it in. I'll bring you back when that's done and dried, and I'm starting to do more of the texture and build things up. Because all I'm going to do now is just apply this all the way along, maybe a little bit further up, because uh, Bear Shark is going to be stood here. So, um, so yeah, I'm going to be coming up probably quite a lot, probably all the way up to here, but I'm going to build up at the front mostly. So uh, yeah, I'll bring you back when I get to the interesting stage where it's not just building up layers of silicon. And uh, yeah, pretty pleased with how this is going to look. I'm really excited to see it. Oh, here we have the results of my carving. And uh, what I've got is I've got one that I'm going to do, which is like stone again. And you can see that I left that one very basic. What I did was my little chop outs to make the um, stone texture along the sides. And actually I pretty much left the top because it just, that was how it was done by the by the Proxon. So this one I'm going to do with the grout mix again, and so I won't do that in this clip. But what I did was I carved down the the two halves, as you can see, that's where they were. But I've done them as much as I can, so they're a little bit different. Did end up with quite a lot of waste because I carved them down a lot. Could potentially have cut them in three and done less waste, but it is what it is. Maybe I'll do that with the other ones because I was trying to have as little waste in this project as possible and it did end up being quite a lot shaved off. But what I'm going to do with this is a slightly different technique for uh, getting texture on. I have some uh, black terrain paint, as I call it, which is basically house paint mixed with PVA and a little bit of dish soap or washing up liquid, depending on if you are British or American. And uh, here I've got a big, or to show you this, a big bucket of sifted sand which literally just comes from my builder's sand pile outside because we've got lots of work going on here and what we do for this is you put some paint on this is actually quite thick I might add a little bit more water to this but it will work at, at this thickness so you slap your paint on like this and then bring this over so you can see literally shake your sand on and let it fall off okay and that gives you some texture when that's dry I'll come along with the same paint and paint it over the top to seal it and then yeah we'll move on from there so that's what I'm going to do for all of these I'm going to apply sand and texture like that and uh, yeah I'll bring you back when I come to do the next stage which as I say will be will be sealing it off first layers dried nicely Still a bit warped as you can see, but it'll be fine. I might end up sticking it to a base, to be honest, as it is a display piece. Anyway, what I've got is, and I forgot, I didn't know where these were and I found them the other day. These are my tiny shells that I picked up ages ago on the Greek coast. And I also have what is actually the Easter kind of like greenery. And I'm gonna just start to put what would be um, seaweed, flowing in on the on the tide and then with a little bit of PVA water down PVA just hold that in place and just build up a little bit more interest in the tide line and what might be happening so put a dab of glue there and a dab of glue there and a dab of glue there and then I have some shells so which I will drop, obviously, because I'm on camera. I tested this, I tried this out, and didn't drop them once. Would you believe that? Right, let's get some tweezers to pick that up. There we are. So yeah, just put some like seashells down and various other bits of interest like that. And that, that will really build up the, the story of this of this shoreline. There we are. So yeah, I'm going to do this. And then when that's dried and sealed, I will bring you back and show you what the next step will be. But this is coming on nicely. It's the next day and this is all dried on nicely. What I might thought I might do is show you a couple of different techniques on these. 
So what I've got back here is I've got my terrain glue, which is watered down PVA, and I've got the same paint, but I've watered it down a bit more because it was a bit thick. And at this stage, you can see you get quite a nice effect on these with the uh, with just the sand over the black paint. So on this one, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to seal it just using PVA. Now you do want to seal this sand, otherwise it will rub off and fall off. And all you do for that is paint a, you know, generous enough, but you don't have to go too crazy, but it will dry clear. So don't worry if you look like you're putting a lot on. Just paint over the whole thing with your PVA and that will seal in all the sand, make sure it doesn't fall off for the next processes. So uh, I'll get that done. There we are. So I'm just going to do that one like that. I'm going to do the others with my original plan. And that involves the black paint and it's basically the same thing. So I won't film all of this. But you look at it coming in and covering the whole thing with the watered down black paint and PVA mix. And that will have the same effect. So what I'm going to do is work on this, finish doing all the others with the black paint. And when that's done, I'll bring you back for the next step. Well, I had some excellent suggestions in the last vlog where I asked for advice on how maybe to deal with that kind of obvious gap or obvious line. And I'm going to use both the suggestions I had and also my idea to do all three. So first of all, I had the idea about maybe putting a wooden walkway, which is a brilliant idea. So I'm going to work on that now. So what I've got here is some, um, these are matchsticks that don't have the sulfur on the end. So um, that will be my underneath and what I'll do is I'll put coffee stirrers across and I will glue them together off the book piece make them up paint them and then stick them on when they're done so what I've done is I've measured the gap here it's four centimeters so down here I've got my chop it people ask where I got this from this is uh, this is a chop it from I can't remember the name of the company now uh, but yeah my my parents bought it for me as a present and uh, I love it so um, I've put the guide four centimeters away from the little razor blade and so I'll be able to make loads and loads of these up using that. It is a bit noisy so I won't do it on the uh, on camera. Next up the other suggestion was a load of detritus like um, fun enough like this. So this was one of my um, I made this and broke it so I might be able to fix it but if I can't fix it what I might end up doing is mount that in here in a broken state. So paint it up and put it in here in a broken state, kind of tucked in under there like that. Let me turn it around so you can see. And that then will kind of mask that guide as well and put some barrels and what have you there. And then the third thing along here, I'm gonna do a fence from here to there. I'm just gonna put some, some uprights and put some uh, wooden planks across there. And so that will hide pretty much all of the two jarring edges. So thank you ever so much to everyone that gave the suggestions. Now let's get to doing it. So I'm going to do a load of chopping and then I'll bring you back when I, when I come to do the gluing for this uh, for this little walkway. So what we have here is another cool gift bought me by my parents and I use this. I really like it. Really really cool. What this is is a magnetic sheet. It's with, well, this is a metal sheet with magnets on it. I can't actually remember the name of the make, but it's really good for knocking up little kind of like forms and guides and what have you for this kind of work. So what I've done is I've split this apart. So we've got the, the rail that will go underneath it and that's held in place by these four. And then at this end, what I've done is I've got space enough for the Oh, that's a message on my phone. Space enough to drop the cross piece in, to cross the actual uh, the actual plank in. Drop some super glue, which is what I was doing then, and then with tweezers can come in and drop it in place like that. And it's just really nice to a really nice little bit of a kit this to do assembly like I'm doing here. So what I'll do is I will assemble this end, let it dry. Now I'm using super glue, so it'll go off nice and quick. 
and then I can basically finish the rest off out of the form and then start another uh, length. I think I need to make at least three of these little sections and then when these are all made and dried uh, then I can paint them. So yeah, that's my plan. And so far, so good. So I will assemble this and all the other little kind of lengths I will need. I think, so I think I need three like this. And then I'll show you uh, what it looks like when it's done. Well, that worked out really, really well. As it happens, I've made it in two parts. I was able to glue uh, one of them together quite nicely, as you can see. So what I'm gonna do now is I've got my uh, raw rumber paint which is the same paint as I used to paint the actual building. I'm just going to use that paint to paint this. So it won't take very long to do that. And it will dry really quickly because it's warm. It's not as warm in Bulgaria as in the UK, which is odd. Not, not normally the case, but uh, not arguing because yeah, it seems to be unpleasantly warm in the UK right now. So I'll paint that both sides. I'll wait for the one side to go off before I turn it over. Um, and then dry brush it with my white chocolate and then stick it in place and that should sort out the problem of this straight edge so next i'm going to look at doing a fence here you can't see that is that a shot fence here there we are <laughs> oh my uh, little bits of color kind of and interest at the water line have worked out really nicely so what i'm going to do now is more silicon sealant but what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to try and use a uh, metal knife to do a little bit, make it a little bit smoother because it's turned out, and it's not normally a problem because I don't normally do this large of an area, but it's turned out just a little bit kind of choppy where I don't want it necessarily to be choppy yet. So I'm wondering if using this knife might work better. So I haven't tried, as per usual. You've just got to do things live on camera and discover for yourself. But I think it should work. And it looks like it is. So I'm going to be able to do that better. So I'll be able to build up the next layer as a much smoother, yeah, that's working well, much smoother layer. Obviously, of course, as I start to do the actual um, waves and what have you and putting texture on, I will want to start making it bumpy. But that is looking a lot better. So I'll get that done. Another layer over the whole thing, maybe two layers with this, and I'll bring it back when I come to do the final layer, which will be adding on the actual waves. Well, the next thing I'm going to do is a big experiment. I'm using a router bit, which I have used in the past, and uh, I'm going to basically carve a tunnel through here and potentially to try and do something inside. I'm not sure where I'm going with this. I'm just playing. <laughs> It is going to end up with some waste, unfortunately, but hopefully um, it will look quite good. And my plan is that it almost look like a cave or look like uh, maybe even a very old man-made stone building. So that's what I'm going for with this, I think. So let's get this working. This takes a little bit of time to heat up and hopefully it'll cut for okay. Interesting thing is, is it's cut a U, so I'm going to have to go back the other way to actually extract it. So let's see how well this works. <laughs> Lining it up right. There we are, I think that's right. And there we are, we have it cut. So I'm going to make that a little bit wider. As I say, maybe do a little bit of an off cut into this way and a little bit of an off cut into this way just so that when you look through it, it looks a bit more interesting and then I'll bring you back when I've done that and uh, when I've worked out what my next step is going to be but I think this is going to be going to try to look like some kind of house or some kind of ancient building or maybe even a barrow or something like that that's where I'm going with it anyway this is a cool tool I really like it it's crazily expensive but really really cool well that worked really well as you can see I've got a really interesting shape inside which you can see from different angles when you're looking in. So that's going to be quite a fun thing to have on the table, just a little bit different and random. What I'm now going to do is, as I said, it's going to be a building. So what I'm now going to do is come along with this sculpting tool 
and mark in where bricks might be. Now I'm not going to worry about being too accurate on this because I think this might be a mud brick building. But just doing that will mean that when I come to do the um, when I come to do the rest of it, when I come to do the texture and, and cover it over, I'll be able to basically uh, make it look like a brick wall, mud brick wall, big lumpy bricks. Really, really simple technique. So yeah, so I'm going to carve these in around, and uh, I'll come back to you when I get to the next stage. But it is really just going to be as simple as that. Well that's done. As you can see there's no discoloration at all around there where I put all the PVA and they're nice and solid now. So I'm happy with that. Finish that, call that a wrap. I've got two more of these kits to build. I'm not sure when I'll do them uh, or how I'll do them, whether I'll follow the same style or do them completely differently. I, I'll work that out when I get to it. But I've really enjoyed actually putting this together and putting this on the base. Uh, it's been, it was a bit of a, sh of a struggle at times to put the kit together because of slightly unclear directions and also the fact that uh, it warped a little bit uh, the actual plastic uh, was a little bit un not, not very straight but now that it's set in place I think it looks really really wonderful and I'm very very proud of it so yeah that's another one done well this building is looking great just shows how serendipitous making it up as you go along can sometimes work out quite well what I've decided to do well I've, I've finished carving in and what I've decided to do this is something that I cut out from inside and I quite like the kind of um, melted appearance uh, and I think I could do something quite cool with that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue that one right at the head of the building here like that and I'll probably paint it a different colour and make it look decorative and then what I've decided to do is stick this um, archway on top as well just randomly not entirely sure why, not entirely sure what it's doing, but I think it looks quite cool. <laughs> and that is all that matters. So I'm going to stick that on. Lining up with the other side, right flush with this edge wall. And there. So there we are. And then squish that glue in so that it seals it nicely and creates a good bond because it's actually a little bit of a of a sharp cut. So there we are, squidge that in. I might put some more glue in that little area inside there as well actually. Let's just hold that in place. Get the glue gun in. Sorry, I'm right in the way of the camera. My professional filming skills to the fore again. But yeah, just looking to fill those gaps in with this glue. And get it to be nice and secure there. So there we are. I will leave that to go off. If I need to do any more filling, I will do it after it's gone off, because right now I'm filling and damaging it. But I think that's quite a funky looking building. It could even be quite good for a sci-fi or Star Wars type build, which is totally out of my comfort zone, or my usual build repertoire. But hey, just goes to show what you can do when you look at some random offcuts and think, I'm going to make something of those and not throw them away. So I've been cutting up lengths of lollipop stick and what I'm now going to do is stick them in place and to do that of course I'm going to use my grabby glue because otherwise it's going to be a real pain so we'll just smear a load on one side I'll do most of this off camera apologies for the chainsaw sound outside if that's coming through on the, on the mic uh, yeah so I'll just do one side on camera and get the rest done um, off camera because I don't think it's going to really show up very well but basically what I'm going to do is just press these into the side I don't need them to be too neat because I don't want them to be too neat I just need them to stay so there we are better if this glue was black or brown or something but this isn't going to be very visible it's just a, a little bit of extra detail that I wanted to add so I'm going to clad the, all the sides of that and then pretty much we're nearly done in terms of this base and I just need to finish off the um, this kind of like 
walk, which as you see, I've painted both sides, so that all that needs to do now is be dry brushed, and then I will start on the on the fence. So yeah, it's good. I've decided to stick the walkway in place before doing the dry brushing. So to do that, I'm just going to run a bead of PVA down the bottom of it like this on both of the runners and then set that in place, let that dry and then once that's dry then I can come along and dry brush it and the reason I'm doing that is I think it will just make it sit in a little bit better if I dry brush it in place so I might catch different parts of the of whatever so I am actually going to clamp that I'm just going to use these very light clamps that won't cause any damage but I don't want it to warp, I want it to sit in nicely so I will clamp that in place and then we'll do the second half, second bit, the small bit, and that looks really good. So thank you to, I can't remember who it was now, whoever it was that gave me the idea for doing a, doing this walkway. I think that's a really nice addition. I think it adds a lot to the piece, and I really appreciate the suggestions. So don't ever be shy making suggestions or saying have you thought about doing. I love having input, and I'm not, not precious, it doesn't have to always be my ideas. So yeah, that's that. So the next thing we're going to do while that's drying is I'm going to get myself out the same um, matchsticks that don't have the sulphur on and I'm going to put a couple here and then run a fence along there. So I'll get my materials together and then uh, bring them back and show you how I'm going to do that. Again, I might make this separately and paint it and then stick it in place and then dry brush it. Before, so I think I might do it in that same same technique. So yeah, but I'll get my stuff together and I'll bring you along and show how I'm going to do that. So carrying on with this fun project, I'm going to do a couple of things now. Firstly, I'm going to make these two here in a very similar way. If I reach it from where its current state is waiting for colour dry brushing. I'm going to make them in a very similar way to this. So that's going to be done for these two. So I won't, uh, I won't do those on camera because they'll basically be the same. I'll hack them out, do the sand and uh, I'll do the grout and then uh, and then dry brush them. So those two are going to be like that. I'm slowly but surely getting to the bottom of my pile. I've got very, very little left. Uh, the one that I'm going to do now, however, is this one, and it falls over, as you can see. But I want this to be a, a thin spire of, of stone. So I've got this, which is an offcut. I actually tried to use this offcut, but it's just not big enough. So I've got this offcut. And what I'm going to do, first of all, is I'm going to carve the stone correctly and I'll cut out a base and I'll glue that to the base and that then will mean it, will, it won't fall over anymore. <laughs> and then we'll do the same thing as I've done in the other ones. So, uh, so yeah, so I'll use the same technique. I'm going to use my sharp knife, slice it down, cut, um, smooth off the 90 degree corners, cut some texture into it um, and then stick it down to this bit of uh, this this bit of uh, thin XPS and that then will be a really nice really nice rock upcropping and I might do a little bit more interest I've got some other bits and pieces that I've uh, that I've shaved off so I can maybe stick them on around the base to make it look like a rubble pile um, so yeah so I'll bring it back when I've done all the shaping and I'm about to do the base but yeah looking good and uh, finally this one has stuck on really really nice it's very solid now and that's good looking good so that's going to be going on to the painting and texturing stage I'm really enjoying this project it's really nice to be making something out of out of what i would normally just throw away or not throw away but stick in storage for some unspecified time of use and then just never get around to it so it's nice to actually be, be making use of it well that's done and looking great very pleased with that and that's come out i've left that sheer deliberately because i think that's quite a nice little feature and uh, you can see here all the off cuts which I'll use as kind of around the base to look like fallen rocks. So what I'm going to do now is with this black thin XPS, I'm going to make this into a base which has a relatively smooth edge. I'm not worried too much about making it circular because I want it to be relatively stable, but I don't want it to be also have a, a solid 5mm edge. So just go and do that. And then I'm going to stick that in place. So I'll grab my awesome glue that I like so much, grabby glue, and uh, we'll get that, drop the lid on the floor, we'll get that stuck on nice and easily like that. 
and then very shortly when that's grabbed enough I'll bring you back and we'll build up with these offcuts just some little piles around the base and what I might do is use some of these offcuts to make some more little kind of scattery rock piles that could be quite good as terrain so there we are that's uh, that's nicely stuck on so I'll let that go off and bring you back for the next step very shortly so that's stuck on and you can see that I've been kind of playing around a little bit with some of these offcuts not sure how much of it I'm actually going to end up using but first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stick some on and then I'll build it up as I go along so to do that I'll put some blobs that's a little bit too much probably put some blobs of PVA around the base and this is going to be a multi-stage process it's not only going to be this these off cuts that I'm going to use I will also come in with sand and stones and gravel and all sorts of other bits and pieces but we've got some uh, we've got some PVA and let's uh, let's do this one here which we'll put in leaning up there and then underneath that we'll slot another piece like this and then underneath that we'll slot another piece like this so we're getting a nice kind of rock fall effect without much effort really so yeah I'm going to keep doing this building up these textures I'll put some music on and do it all on camera why not just pulling out bits of uh, the off cuts and stick them in place so I'll get this done and then you can see what it looks like when I finished so yeah enjoy the music Yeah, that's what I'm going to do, I think. Um, I might put a little bit here, actually. But yeah, that'll take a while to dry, so I'll go and set that to one side and come back to it later. As you can see, it's quite nice using offcuts like this because you can get lots of randomness, particularly when you're um, tearing them like I am. There we are, that'll do. Well. Wow battery died just as I was wrapping up them but I'll let that dry and then I'll come back along and we'll add some more textures uh, but that will take a little bit of time to dry so yeah we'll go and put that in the sun now and hopefully that will uh, that'll be ready for me to work on a little bit later on I think that's a really nice little thing I have still got lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of rough cuts as you can see so um, I might you do the same sort of thing uh, put a few on the top of this building um, and I might make like I said I think a bit ago just cut some bases out and do some little rock piles so uh, if I do do that I'll bring you along um, but otherwise this is just going to go now to dry and uh, yeah, when I've finished <coughs> when it's dry I'll bring you back for the next step right silly battery so what I've done here is same thing taken some offcuts done a little cut out of the black foam and what I'm now going to do is sprinkle some large stones over the top of it to fill in some of those gaps before the main PVA dries and then I'll leave it to dry and then I'll come back and do the next step so there we are simple as that the other thing to show you and I have actually got a concern I forgot to you know I'm gonna have to do that <laughs> I do like keeping my mistakes in so I'm gonna keep this in but what I need to do actually is get my wire brush to take all this off get my wire brush brush off the um, uh, score this up so that it sticks and then reapply it which is a real pain because I really like how it's done but that's not going to stick to this shiny material so I'll do that I'll get it redone I won't film again on this one but what I will show you and I'll, I'll do that and I'll, I'll remember in future won't I but what I am going to do is I'm going to do roughly the same thing but with this piece which is another of my off cuts that I'm saved I'm going to do the same thing stick that to a base put some scatter uh, around it as well so we'll end up with some nice rocky scatter pieces but yeah let's uh let's get this uh get this shaken out and uh remove the the polystyrene bits scrape it with a scraper and then reapply what a pain i hate that all right so now we're on to the last step for the actual water well not the last step but the second last step which is going to be basically building up 
some more texture and some more waves. So I will come along with my uh, gun here and put a bead or a double bead along the front and then using my toothpick and with the alcohol to help it smooth around I'll pull that, oh, and that's obviously been used for glue for something in the past because it's a bit sticky. Um, there we are, I <laughs> almost lost them all on the floor then. Uh, I'll pull that up and make it into a nice curling wave. And then behind it, I will do the same. And that will end up looking really, really cool. And it works really well. This stuff works really well particularly for, for seascapes. So yeah, let's get this done. Now I'll pop some music on while I'm doing this. And you can watch. there we are so what I'll do now is uh, shift the camera angle a little bit so you can see the effect and then I'm gonna leave it to dry actually but I'll still shift the camera effect camera so you can see the effect it's actually really hard to show off because it's quite shiny still but if I lift it up now you can see the choppiness and if we come to the side you can also see so it's quite hard to show bit bright, a bit hard to pick out. But yeah, I'll let that dry and then we'll come along and I'll put a little touch of white, just as a white cap, and then glue your bear shark in place. He's gonna go here and then the project done. So uh, yeah, just let that dry and then come back with some white paint. Well, I did another pour. Actually, I did another two. So I did one, it didn't leak, and I did another one. And unfortunately this time it did leak. You can see that we've got some Drips have gone into the uh, cardboard box coming from this area here. So I've reinforced it with some silicon and hopefully that's going to be good enough. But I think I've identified where it's coming from. If we look in here, got that little divot there and I reckon that's where it's coming in and going through. So what I'll probably do is put some greenery or something on there, but it's still wet. It's not set yet. However, it's coming on. You can see that we've reached in underneath the um, underneath that, that little jetty and uh, well we're still quite a long way off full which is where we're going to be kind of along that line there um, I do think I don't have enough resin <laughs> um, the leaks are not helping obviously but uh, yeah it's looking great it's very very pleased with it very disappointed to have had that small leak very glad that I was on top of it and checked and checked and checked and caught it very early there is a bit dropped out uh, but that's because my first fix didn't do well enough. So anyway, resin pours, I love them. Well, I've actually started to make a start on this. And as you can see, I've gone for a crazy green underpaint. Because looking at the picture, there's quite a lot of green coming in, in his skin and in her skin. And so I thought I'd terrify myself, and I am terrified by doing this, by putting a big lump of green-black, which is what it is. Black-green even. From Vallejo. So I've just sat down for my 22 minutes. I'm going to do a little bit more on this. Um, but yeah, <laughs> we'll see whether that works or not. I really don't know if it's going to. I think it's been worth a try. If it doesn't, then I can always wash it off and start again. But yeah, green underpainting. Who thought I'd ever do that? Right, so let's uh, get this little fence built. So what I've got here is a coffee stirrer, which I've cut to shape, to size even, to fit there and I've measured out the height that I want for my uprights so I'm only going to have a couple I'm going to put one there one there I might do three and I'll cut them all to that length <clears throat> then what I'll do is I'll glue them on um, from behind actually because I want them through the back and uh, and then paint them and then glue that in place well I might have it have it in front I'm not sure but anyway I'm going to cut three of these, stick them in place, and then paint it up. So, uh, yeah, that's as simple as that. Just a little bit of super glue, 
um, and uh, the same colours as before. I have also finished doing this, which is looking absolutely superb, so that's wonderful. Uh, so yeah, so I'm just going to use uh, my strong scissors for cutting this. I'm not going to bother getting the chopping out because I don't need that much. So here we have one upright. You can see how easy that is to cut. And that will get stuck on like that. So there we are. So I'll have three uprights going across, and then I'll paint them glued in place, and I'll bring you back when that's done. Oh, my little uh, rock pile things are working out nicely. That's actually oh, still got some loose. Don't want to drop them into there. Um, but yeah, so you can see that we've got the big stones um, with the with the. Uh, larger lumps of XPS and what I'm going to do now I'll do this for one of them on camera and then the rest off camera is I have my terrain glue there so right, let's just move those out of the way and bring the actual bucket of gravel in because I have gravel now which is a slightly um, it's not my smallest gravel uh, it's I think it's number two this so uh, it's not as small as the sandy stuff that I use for dirt, but it is not that big. So it's going to give a nice and fill in some gaps. So what we're going to do is put the glue in like this around the edges, like so. Try not if possible to get it onto the other stuff just yet there we are that'll do and then I have a spoon on this one because it's a bit easier to pick up just scatter it on again tip it straight off doesn't have to stay on for long and then let it dry and that will really look nice as a rock pile when we paint it so I'll do that technique on the other two and then bring you back for the next step which will be sealing and painting um, but yeah that's another really nice cool little thing and i'm going to start putting some color on the house as well i'm just trying to work out what what color to use man i think you start from brown on this one but i'm not sure so i found some kind of brownie orange grout tucked at the back of my grout store and i think that's going to work perfectly so i'm gonna cover it over Probably going to need to mix more I think, it's actually quite a large piece this and it's going to need at least two if not three coats of this to get rid of the green. But yeah, pretty happy that I found that it's better than the dark brown I was going to use. So yeah, I'll get this done, I won't film it all because well, it's this isn't it, <laughs> just mixing it all up like that. But yeah, I'll get that painted, I'll let you know how many coats it takes when we come to the next step but I'm guessing I'm thinking it might even be three might be three but we'll find out I'll let you know yesterday evening Andrew and I played high noon for the first time which was absolutely brilliant fun and I'll cover that in another video because that's not the purpose of this video what I found and that's prompted me to finally finish it off is I wasn't sure basically who Quentin James Leroy and the one two three game were I did do a little bit of a hack um, but I've been preparing these sheets for quite a long time I've got a bunch of knuckle duster stuff on here um, this is the middle bit is going to be um, the high noon and then I've started to do uh, stickers for on the bottom of my um, um, of my blood and plunder miniatures and what this is it's a uh, stickers basically that, that can go on the bottom of your miniatures so it's a sheet and on the website you can fill it out which is what I've been doing I've been doing it for months because I keep getting distracted but yeah, finally decided that now I'm going to do it. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab out um, a miniature and I'll show you how it works. So here we have um, the two, here we have two of the miniatures which are the sheriff. And if we look inside the book, it will very nicely clearly show you who's who. They've got, uh, they've got very nice clear pictures there. So if we look at this, you can see that this dude here with his arm slightly more cocked is Deputy Gates and this dude here is Sheriff Garrett. So what I'm going to do is pull Sheriff Garrett, there he is, 
You just pull that off. You can see that it's printed okay. It's not brilliant, but it's okay. And then we can stick that on the bottom. And that means that I might have to trim it a bit. Yeah, trim it a bit with a knife. Uh, I'm not put that on quite straight. But that means that we'll be able to know who is who whenever we're playing. So there we are. So I will get these stuck on. Hopefully they will stick. It might be that I need to um, varnish them a bit or add some extra glue. So I'll report back if that's the case. But I'm going to go through and stick all the names on the bottom of all the uh, high noon miniatures. And then I'll report back with what I find, whether it's going to work or not. Um, hopefully it will. Uh, but yeah, at least that means I can know who is who on my table. So I finished all of the high noon and now I'm looking at the knuckle duster ones and I think actually what I'm going to need to do is a little bit of PVA on the bottom of these and uh, stick it on with that because there's a little bit of dust and they're not they're not gluing on quite as well as I'd want but I think with some PVA that will go on very nicely obviously you need to set it down to dry but yeah it's a good idea I think I'm happy I did it it's I'm just my handwriting is terrible and so um, I'm, I prefer to do this than try to scribble on the bottom um, of course if you have good handwriting then you don't need to use the the label making thing on their website and I suppose you could just literally paint on the bottom of your miniatures but that's not really a possibility for me so this is what I'm going to do I'm just going to stick these on I'm going to use like I say a little bit of PVA just to make sure it gives some adherence and uh, like that and then I've ordered these pre-filming <laughs> got them in the right order because I've got lots and lots of miniatures one of the biggest things I struggle with in any gaming is knowing who is who so this is a good solution for me so I'll get this done and uh, yeah I think I can recommend it like I say might need to add some additional glue as you're seeing um, and I'll report back again when this is dried and see whether they actually do stick well but I think they should, it's just paper so uh, yeah, pretty pleased with this glad to have finally got this done it's been literally months since I received these alright, this is much easier to see in this light you can see the two waveforms I've done and they're nicely dried so what I'm going to do now is just take a little bit of white paint not very much and just tick all the tops just like this. Doesn't need much to give that little bit of an impression of white tops as they come crashing in like so. And then when that's done, I will glue our bear shark in place. And, uh, and we're finished. So there we are, get some glue. Glue the bear shark in, stand here for a little while and hold him so he dries and then I'll bring it back and show you what it looks like and we're done. Never let my clumsiness be underestimated. I just booted the side of this and managed to break the end off a little bit. So rather than leave it and hope, I'm going to do a little bit of a repair job which might actually need me to use a uh, bit of a um, some paintbrush just to get that in and then what I'll do is once that's dried I'll apply some more sand and fix it and then dry brush it and paint it again and I'll bring you along because damaging your terrain is not something that only I do so glue that up and when that's dried, like I say, I will just come along, cover that over, and I'll bring you along for that. And better news, I have made my little fence, so I'm now going to paint that. Get that stuck on, I'll show you what that looks like when it's done. But yeah, can't believe, can't believe I did that, can't believe I booted that. So this is something I just did without really thinking, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to show you. So I accidentally spilt some paint, and then I thought, rather than actually, um, I'm that tight, I thought, rather than getting a paintbrush and waste, and also rather than wasting that, you can do quite an effective weathering job just with your fingers because you can control it quite nicely 
and as you see you get quite a nice quite a nice weathered effect just with your fingers so this now can get glued on so uh, let me swing the camera around and uh, stick it in place so here we are so the way this is going to work is it's going to glue on there and there hands in the way it's going to glue on there and there and also on the bottom so what I'm going to do is put some super glue on the bottom of each of these uprights and a little bit of super glue on the end of each of the ends and then put it in place and that will be done so that's the second little kind of hack to to hide these edges of course it's not going to perfectly hide the edges as you can see but uh, it's going to distract from them slightly and maybe give an excuse so the final idea was to do some detritus and uh, uh, like tools and boxes and what have you so I'll now next thing on this project is to, to do that yes another memory board so this one is going to be in uh, three parts I think we're trying to get down to Greece more often and uh, last, week, uh, last week or two weeks ago we went and we're hoping to go again next week and uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this board and I'm going to start to build up in areas uh, so put more than one trip on the board basically so this is the little collection apologies for the racket that's in the background there uh, this is the collection that I that was picked up this time round uh, that being the the centerpiece to be honest um, so uh, what I'm going to do is glue them in place, get a picture, print it out and, and do the same thing as I did last time, but only focus it in one area so I can keep adding things as we go back more and more. First thing I'm going to do is I don't like that brown. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the backdrop probably white or light blue or something like that. I'll do that with a uh, spray paint because that's going to be um, the, the quickest way to do it. And then what I'll do is we'll start to glue the things onto the board and I'll bring you along for that. So we'll go and get this, uh, go and get this spray painted. I like the border. I just don't like the yucky brown kind of like chipboard look. So, so yeah, I'll go and do that. Um, that won't take long and I'll bring you back when I'm about to start sticking things on. All right then, very really pleased with this color I've picked. And you can see that I've got a lovely picture printed out. And uh, what I can do now is I can start to stick these around. I'm just trying to work out how I'm going to stick them. I think I might do that like that so that you can see the inside and the outside depending on where you stand. But I'm quite pleased with the rest of the layout. Um, I think that's how it's going to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some super glue um, and some PVA to stick these all in place. PVA on the Fenari Trip sticker uh, on the picture and then super glue on the rest and that should hold it in place. I might use some of my um, extreme fix for these stones and for this because it's the biggest and heavy and I don't want to fall off, but the rest should be okay with just a couple of dips of, uh, of super glue. So yeah, and then that can go up on the wall and then after our trip this coming Tuesday, we'll have some more and I'll add to it. And um, yeah, we can hopefully get six trips going on on this one memory board, which is, which is basically ideal because yeah. Isn't it awesome? I love it. I love it. <laughs> this is this is just such a lovely thing. And looking at the previous ones I've made makes me want to make more. <laughs> well, that's done. I'm really happy with it. It's not really coming out very well on the camera how the white tops are there, but there's they look great to me anyway. <laughs> I'm really struggling to get the uh, get to show on film how how nice it is, which is why I've come to Shaky Cam so I can try lots of different angles and hopefully some of them will show you what it looks like. Uh, but yeah, that's done now. Very pleased. Uh, I will take some nice pictures and wrap that up and uh, put that on the Discord as a, as my little entry. Uh, had a lot of fun with that. I do really like playing with this silicon stuff. It works really, really well and uh, it gives a really good result. Um, and as I say, there's actually some really good definition on those waves, but it's just really hard to show, which is a real shame. I'll get some pictures. I'll try and get some pictures um, taken even for the vlog, but definitely if and when I do the build video, there'll be pictures um, because, yeah, I'm, I'm really pleased with how it's come out. So I might take a few pictures just now, just not even in good lighting, just to see if I can capture that. But yeah, that's a wrap.
more shaky cam and I booted it again. <laughs> so I repaired the first one, set it to dry. As you can see, that's the first bit I repaired. Set it to go off and then went and booted it again and had to repair another bit, which is just here. Uh, not focusing very well. So what I'm going to do now is a little bit of black paint, a little bit of sand and then dry brush it up and repair it. Uh, one thing I could have done uh, is put a base on. So as you can see, I've not finished it at all. And I think if I'd have had like an MDF base with a little bit of a taper, that probably would have, um, or hardwood or whatever, or um, hardboard or whatever, that would have that would have prevented this damage. Now, this is only terrain for my personal use. And normally I don't go around kicking my terrain because normally I don't leave it on the floor. Um, and I can tell you what, as soon as I booted this a second time, I picked it up. <laughs> um, but if you're making for a club or, or for any kind of um, use by lots and lots of people, you'll probably want to add a few more things for hard wearingness to these kinds of builds that I do. So like a hardboard base or something would make a big difference. But anyway, I'm gonna finish remedi remediating this and uh, yeah, learn my lesson. <laughs> well, these three pieces are coming on really nicely. Um, as you can see, we've got quite a nice covering of the larger sand. And what I'm about to do now is come along with my terrain glue again and Again, looking to avoid as much as I can going over what I've done, but not worrying too much if I go over a little bit because a little bit of sand going over the top of some of this will look good. But what I'm going to do, and I'll do most of this off camera because it's going to be a little bit repetitive, and I will now bring my sand in. This is my most sifted, the smallest one there. And let's see if I can get this in shot is not always the easiest thing when you've got a big bucket. There we are, right. So what I'll do, same technique, throw the sand on and then let it fall off straight away. And there we are. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go around all of the edges of all of these bases, this one and the other two. And then when I've done that, I will seal the whole lot with some more of the PVA and then we'll come to painting. So yeah, I really like these. This has just been a really good project, really fun project. And uh, yeah, I, I'm also like loving the fact that this stuff isn't going in the bin, which is, you know, good because waste is horrible. Time for a new project. And unusually this one's gonna start off with a sketch and a plan, which I never do. So wise old Bill from the TCU Discord, otherwise known as the King of England, came up with an unofficial challenge, which, is, uh, really, which was a really cool idea. Um, and uh, a fair number of us actually uh, decided to, to join in. So the challenge was this. You are tasked to design a shelter that offers refuge to the de degenerates, scum and villainy of society. Uh, this could include an abandoned building now inhabited by bandits, a monster nest sheltered by the ruins of an ancient castle, a crashed ship used as a base by space pirates. Play with the theme and share your creativity. So that's really cool. Um, and the other cool thing is uh, he uh, what, allowed seven days for people to express an interest to take part, but it's an entirely open-ended build. So there's no major pressure for finishing, uh, which is a good thing, but it can also be a bad thing if, if uh, you don't like finishing projects. Um, but for me, that just means I'm gonna be able to really just take my time on it. Um, and uh, I've come up with some crazy idea. So let me explain my idea. I've already bought some of the materials, the uh, insulation foam, the uh, XPS I'm gonna use. My idea is I want to build a multi-layered cave system. <laughs> so it's going to be playable. Now, if you go way back in my, um, in, 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 the, in the annals of this channel, you'll find the snake temple, which I will attempt to remember to link somewhere up here, wherever it goes, can't remember. Um, and that was a multi-layer playable, which I've still never played on, which I'm gutted about, really need to. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do it multi-layer, so you'll be able to lift um, like an onion, and there'll be ramps going up and down between each level. Um, and uh, But it will also be able to sit on the table just as a hill with potentially some playability going on top as well. So it's quite a advance or I'll try to, uh, quite a stretch, not advance, but quite a, quite a big project. So 
the idea will be that you'll have, if I can just sketch this, and I'm not a very good artist, so um, the idea would be that you would have a hill that has like a profile, something like this. So it's, uh, it's not going to be steep on either side, we'll be able to walk up. Uh, we could maybe even have some standing stones at the top, um, which could be quite interesting. Some standing stones up there. Um, and then what you'll have is you'll have maybe halfway up, uh, like a path going up halfway up, and then you'll have an entrance into the caves. And then from there, then maybe we'll have another entrance on the other side. And from there, there'll be a maze of tunnels, um, which, will, um, which you'll be able to navigate. So what I'll do is I would have one level like this, Okay, and then the tunnel entrance there, and then another level like this, and then another level like this. And each one will sit on top, um, and so the tunnels will, will basically lead away from this. Um, and like I say, I might have more than one um, entrance exit. I might have a hidden entrance, I'm not sure. There's all sorts of ideas going from my head, um, but that's what I wanna do. And it's gonna be quite big. I do like to do my build my big terrain, uh, particularly to get this kind of height. Now, the um, the stuff that I've bought is um, the same material as I'm using for my offcuts project. So that's how thick it is. I think it might be a little bit thinner, but, uh, but yeah, it's quite thick. So what that means is that each of my levels can be one sheet of XPS. And that will mean that I can ensure that I have flat joins and then I'll be able to basically carve out around it. So you can see that's plenty of height for a 28 millimeter figure. It's height, it's plenty of height for me to kind of carve in and out to maybe bring different heights, uh, different heights of tunnels. So if I want to have the tunnel to look on the side, if I want to have the tunnel doing this, there's plenty of height for me to do that and not go, not, not impact the, the level above. So anyway, a bit of a long winded nattery introduction to this project. But I wanted to explain the uh, inspiration and the concept and then we can look back on this clip when I've finished the project and see how close I, I reach. So yeah, we'll see. Uh, but yeah, I'm very excited about this. It's going to be a long running one. I'm not going to rush it. Um, and uh, yeah, hopefully it turns out right. Hopefully it does, but we shall see. Well, I've got all these done. And as you can see, that looks really good. I'm very, very pleased with that. Now, the only thing I might do now is varnish the bottom use some paint on varnish just so that they don't get damaged or uh, worn off but they're pretty well stuck on i'm pretty happy with that after putting the pva on and i did everything as well for the high noon so uh, yeah i think i'm going to continue doing that particularly for the ones which have the right size bases i do think that unfortunately the uh, blood and plunder bases are just too small for me to do this which is a shame but uh, it is what it is. There's a little bit of waste there because I did do quite a lot of, um, I printed out a load for Blood and Plunder, but they're just not the right size bases. But for any that are this size, 28 mil or a little bit bigger, they're gonna be perfect. So yeah, at least now I'll be able to identify the miniatures just by having a quick look underneath, um, rather than trying to work it out by, with my memory, which is absolutely terrible. So that's a win. Well, there we are. I just passed the hour mark and stuffed full of many many projects and I really hope that they've been interesting and informative and helpful for you uh, if you made it this far thank you I really do appreciate you watching the video um, and uh, sticking around even though my videos are particularly long um, I know that is something which people comment on uh, uh, last week my Tuesday video was called a film because it was feature length uh, but yeah that's just how it goes so I will wrap this video up by saying, as I always do at the moment, hopefully for not very much longer, we, we can hope that if you are directly or indirectly impacted by the horrible war going on in Ukraine, then my thoughts go out to you and anyone you know who might be over there or impacted. Uh, dreadful, dreadful times. Uh, and to everyone, please do stay healthy, stay safe and stay well.